Howdy there, folks. I am I, I'm happy uh, because for a probably limited time, the 3D model improvement mod is up and working. I'm kind of working against the clock because I, I believe the devs said that there <laughs> there is a patch coming and it's probably going to break the mod. So I, I got to act somewhat quickly here if I want things to, to, to work out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I promised to do at the end of campaign 14. It's basically to do another Union Win Whiskey and Lemons playthrough, but with a lot of the mods I made for campaign going into this mod. And I actually got in more than I thought. I can actually get my April 15th scenario. So we're starting in April 15th, 1861, rather than waiting till July. So we get like, you know, an extra almost almost three months of war. Uh, we're going to put the CSA on... Uh, we're going to... What do we have here? We could do aggressiveness elevated. And I think with medium... Uh, there's... So pretty much, it, if you haven't heard, heard this before, uh, the AI basically gets no buffs. That was one of the things in vanilla that was bothering me. And so this is... Union gets no, I get no buffs, the AI gets no buffs, it's pretty much whatever you do. They have the personalities, I created the AI personality, so even though I'm not in control of picking their policies, pretty much both sides are going to be picking policies the way that I normally do if I am them, and I think it's one of the more optimal builds. And you'll see these are the Union starting policies, I think as far as starting policies go, certainly Breadbasket uh, with what you can do uh, at Ag 3 and 4 is, is a great one. Union Pacific Railroad for the credit rating is not bad. Uh, other parts here are okay as well. And support abolitionism, I mean, support is never a bad thing. I think this is kind of a flex spot. You could argue this is a flex spot too, but just the late game breadbasket options that my AI personality is set up to pursue. Now, whether they will is, a, is another story, but I certainly hope they do. And for the CSA, <clears throat> you'll see their policies when we get in in-game. But I do want to go ahead and jump into campaign. I just want to say... Uh, I, I, I do hope you enjoy this. You know, as these campaigns tend to tend to be, it's going to be quite short compared to when I'm at the top and, and managing everything. Uh, so we have a small channel here. If you do actually enjoy the content, uh, please do hit a like button so that uh, this can get pushed out to, to, to more folks who might also enjoy it. Without any further ado, let's hop in. We're going to start a new career, and uh, I have created a perfectly random... So I went into War of Rights, and I randomly created a face, and then I randomly created a uniform for uh, this guy. I think he's from the New York's 20th. And so we'll say he's actually from New York. The rest of this, I, I don't know if there's a way to randomly do this, but I I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll say October 24th, 18th. Yeah, that's that's fine. We have my flag. It should at least show up on me in, in game. And so what I want to do in this playthrough that's going to make it different than, the, well, one of the other things that's going to be different in this campaign than in the last one, in the last two Whiskey and Lemons I've done, is that while the character creation is going to be random, so you're not going to watch me go through this questionnaire, we're, we're going to do it randomly. Uh, and having said that, so this is not this is not a great start up here. Uh, individualist? Okay. Outrageous? Okay. You know what? They've kind of got me three out of three. <laughs> Fire Eater. Uh, not so much, but uh, you know, three out of four ain't ain't bad, but perfectly random. Uh, but uh, we're still gonna go with who we are, and uh, yeah, you know, this isn't isn't bad. We're gonna go ahead and sign up with this. And what I was saying is the other part of that's gonna, gonna be different is that to role play the past playthroughs, I. I rarely, if ever, would take control of other brigades or other divisions. In this one, I'm actually going to play as kind of a fame-hungry, whatever this guy, uh, fire-eating individualist who's also, I think I was outrageous, and, and yet a hermit, despite all of that. I'm going to be seeking fame. But actually, I'm just going to try to play a bit more optimally. I've learned even more about the camp features between the last one and the last campaign and this one. Uh, it, it was mostly on how to use companions to get a little bit further along. I found that in the two builds I did, which were very similar characters, we don't need to hear this, they were very similar characters, they didn't attract a lot of companions. And they didn't attract... The one that I got, I think, both times was the spouse, and it wasn't a particularly good one. Her most notable achievement, I think in both campaigns, was giving me food poisoning multiple times. Not really what I'm interested in. Uh, so we have a choice of early commands. <clears throat> I think my, my my path to fame and fortune, all that other stuff. And yeah, I modded. This was an accident that I left in. 
but I, I accidentally modded the camera height zoom to actually zoom in really close. And, you know, it's not it's not great, but it's not terrible. So, But we're going to have a lot of men, and we're, we're going to have our very little prestige after that. Okay, that is what it is. Uh, but that's how we're going to try to level level everything up, uh, is, is through combat, getting as many men under our command as possible, and then using them effectively, but also basically using them to, to farm prestige and uh, move our way up the ladder that way. So yeah, we're in April 15th, so the, the real Civil War has in fact begun, and now uh, this, let me get this right, this fame-hungry, individualist, outrageous, hermit, fire-eater, is going to try to clam the, the ranks here to, to number one. Uh, and I'm surprised, <laughs> I'm really surprised that given these characteristics, we already come in this well liked. But hey, it's good to know. <clears throat> and even though it says I'm a poor administrator, if you looked at the last campaign, it's actually not too shabby. Uh, starting off, right, April uh, 1861 at, with two stars of administration, uh, that's okay. Cunning, I found really easy to build up in the last one. Initiative to me doesn't seem all that important since I'm actually doing the, the micro. And fame, I think, is what affects all this other stuff, but I, I guess we will we will find out. Alright, we have stuff going on in the background because I hear the trains blowing their whistle, but I, I do want to get into camp here. We have Alright, so we have four hours in rest. The uh so I, I have read the I finally read the manual that came with the, the DLC. And so I have a better understanding of what happens. We don't have any companions, so we're not going to do that one right now. Uh, early on, we're obviously going to hit training hard. I still think because I'm not in charge of the group, right? I'm in a division... Where am I? I think, was I with Patterson? Who am I with? Okay, this shows me in the water. I hope that's right. No. So we just have two beefy brigades. Uh, we got to try to... I don't know. Do we have... All right. So we don't have enough Springfield rifled muskets to equip them. But the other brigade has them. And if not, Baker may have to pay a little bit of the troll toll here to uh, to get me prestige when we actually end up in combat. That's okay. Uh, but certainly training is one of the things we're going to look for. I don't think morale is that bad. Yeah, it really isn't, and so, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I don't think there's anything we can actually do that's going to matter too much here, because the brigades are pretty full. Inspect readiness, I don't think that's us, I think I think we're pretty much tethered to whatever the, in this case, McDowell's command is, so I'm not going to worry. You're not uh, multiple infantry, cavalry, or artillery, okay, yeah. I think since we usually have bad relations with someone to start, <clears throat> we'll try to improve those. I don't love sinking a lot of time in here, but if it's going to take us a while to move up, and let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take us a long time to get to, well, quite a while to get to Brigadier General. Uh, but the way I think of it is kind of what are you investing that's going to travel with you? So like military studies travels with you because that's you, regardless of who you're commanding. Your subordinates are going to change, uh, especially if we, we move out of this force and, and elsewhere. Uh, but we might be with them for a while. So whatever. I, I'll put a little bit in this, but I don't mean to put all that much in it because I don't know that it matters. Maybe we'll put a little bit in here and then quickly take it away if our morale gets you know up to about 90% or so. Uh, military studies I like because it travels... Uh, leisure time, I think, is a pretty, pretty good one uh, when we get into camp actions. And then I feel like I'm ending up short of one somewhere. So I'm just going to throw that in Engage in Politics. Because we were really light on prestige and we need it, uh, I am going to throw that in there. And we'll, we'll just kind of hope for the best. And then, like I said, we'll probably transfer some of the motivation stuff uh, elsewhere very soon. Elsewhere in camp, we'll see what actions are available to us. My goodness, what is up with this? Fundraising. This is, a, I find, a generally a good one. Uh, we need a little bit more prestige in order to do it. 
But if we can just get into a battle and get this thing rolling and trade 200 prestige for $500, uh, especially when some of these other things open up, it seems really good. And so uh, that's that's one I would look to do once we get the prestige to do it. But uh, I didn't leave myself 200 by going with the, the largest division I could get. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I want to do. I don't really want to spend money yet. I mean, we'll get some money through our, our salary. We'll check on our health. And uh, as long as it's not going down, we should be okay. Uh, but yeah, you'll notice that this is the kind of usual start in my campaigns. The non-whiskey and lemon careers. Uh, because those are the ones that should be playing in the background for the Union and for the CSA. And so it should be a bit more symmetrical. Yeah, the CSA, with their build, I promised I would show you. So they got Old Dominion, uh, Apostles of Disunion, and Southern Pacific Railroad, which I think are, are all really good. Uh, I don't know if the mods I've made on these have, have stuck through, but the, the gist of it is they start... If you look at the average of these, because that's kind of how my mod works, that support and morale move toward one another at pretty much a symmetrical rate. They're at a 97, and we're at 87.5. So the Union starts in a bit of a hole, uh, but you know it's on the CSA to hold their territory. The way the campaign is supposed to feel is that really what moves the needle in terms of wins, losses, uh, in the overall campaign is how much territory you're holding and what kind of casualties you're taking. And this is going to be a different feel for me because usually I'm I'm used to controlling everything, right? Uh, how we recruit, how we equip, where we move on strategically, and then where we move on on the battlefields that we're able to fight. So that we don't have it is just something I'm going to have to, to live with, and we'll just see how the campaign plays. Last campaign, what ultimately did it, if you saw me throw in the towel there, was that... Uh, we were recruiting new brigades. We, we had a pretty decent prestige uh, gain there in the last year and a half or so. And then we were just losing battles because of the AI. And uh, we were pretty much then having our units disintegrate once those losses from those battles kicked in. And it it just didn't feel right. Uh, and, and it seemed like certainly our careers were done, uh, if not if not more. So, uh, this, actually, actually, the mods I made won't, won't really affect that so much. It, it's not going to make a huge difference on the battlefield. In the past, I've used uh, the AOM weapons mod, and then I made my own modifications to that. Oh, huzzah! We won at Winchester. Uh, but... This time, I, I've gone with the, the kind of vanilla settings, which are generally more permissible in terms of their range. They, they give a longer range. Uh, and they also are going to give a better accuracy than what we're used to. In the last campaign, it just seemed like small arms were not that accurate. Uh, and one of the things I did is I increased by about a third the inaccuracy at the longest range, which I think is it's it's more historically accurate. Uh Right, so the Springfield Rifle Musket, for example, I think in vanilla here is going to be able to shoot 400 yards. But, you know, it's, it's maximum accuracy, which I also changed. So it'll be whatever, I think up to 30% of its maximum range. So 30% of 400, I think that would be what, 100? Like inside 120 yards, it will be at its most accurate, most accurate uh, and, and uh, getting a lot of shots. Despite the, the rifled musket being a thing, uh, as I think a lot of you uh, history buffs know, seldom were they actually firing at those ranges, particularly in the first two, three years of the war. A lot of those engagements, I, I read in different articles, the average engagement range was about 50 yards, uh, which is is wild. And, and that actually finding that out led me to, to, to make my own uh, weapons mod here, uh, which did a number of things. It, it kind of buffed mixed muskets, uh, and it, it, it's a it's a whole modding odyssey uh, that I don't feel like talking about right now. We're running it on 20x, not 50x, only because the rumors are, and that's how I operate on rumor, uh, that the AI at the campaign level will just do much dumber things 
if you try to go above 20x and then I think in battle if you try to go above 5x and, and so I, I'm seeing why that's true I mean there was the old conventional wisdom that order delays also hindered the AI I don't know uh, I, I know that I, I, I said I thought there might be some sort of advantage there but I don't know I guess I play with order delays on and just see how it goes but anyways this is us moving up here with uh McDowell, you can see we're not quite a month into the war. I don't know what our our troops are like. So yeah, our readiness is so that that shows me that my theory, as I as I should have expected, is completely wrong. Right? McDowell was just went orange, and I was actually lower than McDowell. So I guess it does kind of matter what I do. Alright, so then maybe we'll we'll think about throwing some stuff in there. Uh, let's see. I wish there was just an easier way to find out. All right, so we don't need to put anything more into motivating the men as long as Taylor is comparably good. I think we're, yeah. So we, we're just wasting stuff in motivating the men at this point. I think we remove all of that and we may take a hit and we'll instead take a look at readiness. How many hours did I take out? Okay, I took out two. And because I think we really are hard up for prestige here. I want to get that 200 so I can get the, the fundraising started started rolling. Though if McDowell intends to engage, I hope he doesn't. He's run himself into the orange. Yeah, they're not complaining about my logistics. So my, my theory in the last campaign was that my logistics, and here we'll slow it down to see if this is true. So this is McDowell. He's at the A in readiness. His supply... Well, you can read what it is, right? Uh, we Sure, we could browse. Oh, left mouse button to browse. Well, we won't be browsing. But we go down to our level. And what do we get? I mean, we, we're just as well supplied. All right, rather than being at the A, we're at the R of readiness. So we're a little bit less ready. Training is untrained. Condition is... it. That may also have to do, though, with just McDowell's normal stats. I will bet because of... Uh, right? So he's a mediocre administrator, but I'm probably a poor administrator, I think, at this point in the war. Oh, no, I'm mediocre as well. Did my, did my rating go up? Uh, it's at like two and like a fifth of a star. But what we were not able to do earlier, so in addition to get the uh, the fundraising tro uh, train rolling, if we get the general staff, the general staff is what travels with you. And I didn't understand that in, in previous campaigns, but this is travels with you. So whoever you appoint, it, yeah, it kind of matters. The staff core will change as you get promoted or as you move to, if I move to say a different division command. And so knowing that I'm likely to pay premiums probably for these folks because they're just going to be mine. And I'll, if I pick these folks, they're probably gonna be more towards bottom of the barrel. And I'm thinking, kind of how do I get the, the furthest ahead, the fastest? If I do these, I'm just gonna be completely out of prestige. And what are we gonna get here? Initiative plus nine. So that actually is, out of order delays mindset, that's actually not terrible. Uh, I wouldn't want to have to go back and rehire someone else because the prestige cost is so high. I'd want it to be one time. But you know, if he's going to give me plus nine, and then in camp we focus on improving their skills, that actually might not be a bad one and less of an order delay what do i think of this guy i don't know i i, I don't like the idea of being naked uh without that prestige so i'm gonna hold back on i think that this is just a i thought that this was always referring to how much you were putting in during camp but now i'm not so sure because four hours on right drilling the troops is not not really that insignificant, so. All right, we've been ordered down here, I guess. Current orders, no specific order. All right, 
So I'm going to pause all of you because right now we're just moving back and forth on, on the map. And uh, if there is something to, notable to do, I'll, I'll bring you back for that. Uh, yeah, that'll be the plan. All right, so we're going to make some sled adjustments here in camp. So I actually checked on the relations with Baker and Taylor, and they're quite good. I mean, they're all 20%. I mean, to me, as long as it's like negative 20 or higher, it's it's not terrible. It's probably not going to lead to feuding or anything like that. <clears throat> We've gotten over the 200 prestige mark. I don't know if that's going to be enough to do anything, but I don't think we need to spend quite so much time here. I guess we could try a little bit. We've got five hours of drilling. That seems like it should be enough. I took the points out of leisure time because since I wasn't actually trying any actions, but we might have to plug those back in. Uh, I, I don't remember where the maximum, but I, I don't have the manual out in front of me. So maybe five hours is the the maximum that we could get over there. I think we'll plug probably the last two here into military studies because I do need to get my stats up. When we get companions, we'll have to worry about that. When we get more HQ staff, we're going to have to do more here. And when we get activities, we're going to need them here. But when we don't end... When we get control of, I think, the overall army, we're going to have to care more about logistics, readiness, or recruitment, logistics and readiness, and, yeah, may, may, maybe recruitment, but right now, both brigades are, are pretty high. But if we can get prestige from this, that will allow us to equip our second brigade with Springfield Rifle Muskets or something better so that I don't have to lose as many men. I don't remember if there are any good 200, oops, 200 prestige choices in actions i really don't i'm not interested in too many of those it's usually the green and the yellow that i like so this one it's gonna be a little bit while a little while before we can get that but yeah it's gonna be a long while before we get that and then this one will convert a lot of prestige into fame maybe later that's 200 dollars for 250 prestige this is 200 prestige for $500. Huh. I've also found, I found in the last campaign that this one actually, when you get the settings right in camp, you can do one of these in about a month. And so you just, I mean, that's, I don't know. To me, it feels like that is just a really good trade. Uh, if you need the money, because you can then use the money to do other things, such as spending $1,000 to get 1,000 prestige. Uh, though prestige, I think in general, when you get a larger force, it's easier to come by than other things. We also want to hold some prestige in the back pocket so that when we do get in battle, we can go and, and try to get other groups under our command. If not a brigade or two, then uh, maybe an entire division and, and see what they do. But we are just sitting up here with McDowell, who's at the D in readiness. Uh, poor training. We'll, we'll compare ourselves. Our random great Scots here. Who is also poor. And yeah, behind on the readiness because I've not invested as much in it. And I still don't think I'm quite as good as an administrator. But you see, there's absolutely no reason to invest in logistics at this point since everybody seems to be getting what they're supposed to. Uh, yeah, so that's that. So for the, the recent Christmas here, I got two Earl Hess books. There were like five on my list. And the, the prized one is the one on logistics. I'm, I'm so happy to have that. And so I've started to make my way through that. And if you were here when I was reading uh, his book on field artillery, you know I'll just randomly spout off like, oh, you know, according to Hess, blah, 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 blah. And nobody cares. You kind of just go on and, and, and uh, ignore all of that. But it's, it's the part I find, whoa. Outrageous and your ignorance towards religion has not... Oh, uh, oh, word travels. I thought it said world travels. It's like, I don't think I'm traveling the world. All right. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. I'm not going to let that affect me too much. Yeah, I would say with... What, what do we have? Five hours? in in. So in a year, if I did this, I would get 1,000 prestige. I think that's the maximum. Is diminishing? I don't know. I have about 5,500. We'll, we'll see if it actually goes lower than that, but I, I don't think that it's a huge a huge deal. But it's one of the other things I like about starting April 15th is that I get to start training the troops 
back in the middle of April. The normal campaign starts on July 8th. And so if you don't mod it to start earlier, then you got to kind of start with others. Yeah, I I have found this in every Whiskey and Lemons. There's just some dude I end up quarreling with nonstop. It has never led to a feud in battle. But it's just, it, we get the notification up. If you've watched other campaigns, you know what I'm talking about. All right, we crossed the $200 mark. I don't know. I mean, we'll pay for, we'll make sure that we can pay for our provisions here. I think our health is, I thought it was good. Yeah, it's pretty good. We're doing the eight hours of rest thing, so that's that's important. I would be interested in, in converting that money into to prestige. Then maybe, maybe filling out our general staff and then uh, keeping enough prestige in the bank for if we ever end up in battle. So let's go ahead and get that done. We're going to go over here. We're going to go to fundraising. Yeah, we're going to go to... What? All right, so I have to have stuff in leisure time. That's fine. I had to do that anyway, so I'll just do it now. Where are we going to pull from? Um, we'll pull from military studies. And we'll actually pull yeah, a little bit there. Put it in a leisure time to try to get this thing done somewhat quickly. That's fine. And now... Where are we at? We're going to go here, and we're going to plop down fundraising. And it will be done when it's done. 19 days. Yeah, that's really fast. Seems like it. Oh, I read that wrong. I was reading it backwards. I thought it was $200 for 500 prestige. Nonetheless, with the additional money, we can use that to convert things that are going to get us prestige. So... Yeah, but we really don't want to spend more than that because I, I'm. <laughs> I I think we're gonna go end up going to battle now, and we're not gonna have the prestige to uh, to take from others. Oh well, you live and you learn. I still think it's a decent trade though. Uh, prestige, I think overall it's easier to come by than money, and so losing two hundred of it for five hundred for five hundred dollars is is probably okay. Again, we can recycle that money back into Prestige later. And so the way I think of it is, if you get a thousand dollars, right, which would cost you 400 Prestige, you can then do the action that translates a thousand dollars to a thousand Prestige. So you pretty much trade 400 Prestige for a thousand Prestige, net 600, and all you lose is the time spent pursuing those actions. It, it seems like a pretty decent prestige farm if if you know that cycle. And it's just the one cycle that I'm familiar with, and so that's that's why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it. All right, so here we got 40,000. They got, uh, we'll say maybe about 35,000, depending on how good the intelligence is. Uh, but yeah, this is something I, I would definitely want to be on the field for. So we are going to get a battle here in the first episode. All right, this is our report. I'm not going to really read that. That is a fat 10-pointer right there. I have to decide if I want to do in the saddle. It's so hard to do it when I have the 3D models mod working. Uh, let's clean this up. Actually, what do, what do we have here? I don't need to see routes. I guess we'll keep Fog of War on. Yeah, make that as small as possible. Minor defeat. Let's see what they have for us. We don't have any cab to scout for us. Okay, now we have some sound. Uh-oh. I'm guessing the objective is just the one that's... A, yeah, it's the one that's over here. So we're on the left of the line, so we're probably going to be expected to remain on the left of the line. I don't like the looks of that. <laughs> uh, we should be in marching column here. 
But I'll do that. You don't have to watch that. And okay, we are off and marching. And uh, when we get there, I'll bring you back. So I bring you back now because there's a whole lot to show you. But because we got stuck at the tail end of this, I thought we were going to be able to take our own path, and we got redirected to follow others. But you can see the the lead brigades are there, and they get there so early. The CSA recognizes that they're going to attack before we are set, and they're they're going to wall up these guys. Uh, this is going to be a, I think, this is looking like uh, it should be something that we could probably pretty easily win. And uh, these guys are not reacting to the fact that there is enemy in their midst. I, that is very peculiar. I mean, when when I play against the AI and they see me, you can tell they abruptly stop what they're doing and they'll they'll reposition. But our guys are just going in. So, oh well. Not even sure where we've been ordered to. Looks like others have gone to the left. I would not try to go to the left at this point. Yeah, it's not too surprising. Should be able to fight us piecemeal here, so. Well, what we can do is uh, go down and check it out. Since we're not going to be in the saddle, we can at least enjoy, and we can enjoy it without this on. There we go. We can enjoy the 3D Models mod, which is up, the improved 3D Models mod, which is up and running. I find that it, it tends to make the CSA look better, that there's uh, some work done on the color variations. And so a lot of the CSA units feel, I don't know, for me, I notice it more with them than, than with others. But you notice here's an entire brigade and a half that is not firing because the AI is probably in double line. I'm doing all this fully expecting something to, to happen to my guys who I'm not paying attention to. I don't remember what we have yet. In terms of 81 prestige, we, uh, we ain't looking too hot. They got the cab down. Uh, they don't look like they're in loose formation, but we've already routed. It is the first engagement. Remember that. So uh, a lot of the other things that can matter, like being flanked, tanking, flanking fire, all those things relatively matter more in these early engagements until your units have built up experience. Uh, but it looks like they have not just two full cab brigades, but probably two full cab brigades, and maybe a, a cab regiment there. We have an errant brigade uh, that is out here, and they are just absolutely unconcerned with everything that is happening. All right, now folks seem to have some idea as to what's going on. Well, maybe they were just doing push-ups in the face of the enemy to show their, their complete disdain for uh, their ability to shoot. I don't know what that was, uh, but I know, yeah, we're going to try to come in on the right. It's a very odd formation to end in. Uh, but I think Hunter's in trouble. How much would it cost to take McDowell's 555 prestige to take over the force for this battle? Eh. If I had it, I would have had to do it earlier. I think we could have made much of it back. I'm not sure. Love to see this brigade all right, they're getting orders. I hope that order is to come up here and, and support on the flank. At least these guys will have the creek. These guys should have the creek for now. These guys actually might have the creek. They do, yeah. So sometimes even when you're close, you still get the cover bonus. Don't ask questions. It, it just happens that way. And you can see that the, at least this part of the AI is symmetrical. They have not one, not two, but three brigades. Actually, I think this is a fort. Let's see if I can get this right. One brigade, there's a cap brigade somewhere, another infantry brigade, and then this infantry brigade, and then the skirmishers are behind them. So the AI AI is <laughs> is also facing facing difficulties, but they are in a slight concave. They're, well, somewhat together. I don't know what's going on up here or what's going on over here. These guys, yeah, that's a terrible order. Oh well. Oh well. I'm not sure why I've stopped moving. 
Uh, I'm going to move myself up to here and just hope for the best. Okay, since we've modded the camera to be able to zoom in like this, let's go ahead and enjoy it while the 3D mod works. But maybe speed it up a little bit because I want to do something. Oh, they're kicking out skirmishers, rightfully. Yeah, there's not as much variation in the Union uniform. I found the CSA troops I had when I when I tested to see if the mod worked tend to look better from the back at kind of this angle. Uh, and it, believe it or not, silly as it sounds, the hats actually, depending on what hat they had, if they had the uh, brimmed hat. Tend to look really good. CSA artillery hitting behind the mill here. My goodness. It has all the hallmarks here of, of an early battle. Alright, so we have more friendlies. Now we have friendly infantry that's coming up behind their cab, and the cab seems unaware. Maybe this is them telling him, hey, hey, psst, guys. They're, they're there, man. They're there. They got artillery, artillery, <laughs> infantry, infantry. Yeah, you got, like, infantry that are are coming. Uh, those guys routed, unfortunately. And so that's two brigades off the table for us. Uh, but casualties are pretty close. So I think if we can get more troops in the field and we can rally those we've lost... We have a chance, a chance of making this one right and getting a win. Let's see how their cab do over here in the, whoa, in the wheat field. I also want to slow down a bit. Battlefield scroll speed will slow down a little bit. Mm, not enough. Out better. Unit is indeed not under my control. Alright, we usually choose not to know that kind of information, but please, no, don't go there. Just, just stop and shoot, man. That's all you gotta do. What was the other brigade that was coming? Oh, here it is. It's, it's, uh, I think this was Sh I thought I saw Sherman up here, but maybe not. I don't know where he was. It would be nice if this artillery could recognize what's going on and just stop right there and just shoot over the fence and get at these guys, because I think these guys are... Yeah, 100 casualties. Ooh, ooh, they dropped some dudes in the HQ. There's two HQ sprites down. Actually, that cab is getting it worse than the infantry. All right, CSA, for their part, they're now starting to stack up a bit on the left. <laughs> Our forces are just... They're just changing facing in... in well face of the enemy. These guys are doing not much, but they are unstable, so maybe they shouldn't do much. Uh, they're broken and probably rallying. There's Sherman. Alright, he's got a good idea. Which is to arrive on the flank. Yeah, I guess if you're the CSA and you're holding a fat 10-pointer, what's your incentive? Especially if you're, you're holding it in front, as the CSA is. You can kind of just sit there and shoot. X formation that all the uh, actual Civil War generals forgot to use. Oh, it'd be so nice if they made better decisions. Friendly and enemy AI. Right? Rather than whatever this is, right? The blob. Engage it, Will. Wasn't that already our order? 
Hey, rather than... <laughs> hey, let's march our brigade through that other brigade and then shoot the brigade they're shooting at. Come on, guys. Come on. Alright. Actually, Baker's ours. I was going to say, I recognize that name. We'll uh, we'll take our leave of McDowell. We'll stay close to our, our boys. Probably what would help our forces if we could do something to relieve this. I don't think we have the numbers to do it. And so instead, I think we'll see what we can do against those two brigades back there. I'm not. I'm not terribly sure. I would like to see both of these brigades engage that cav brigade and break it. And that opens up new opportunities, because then there's two of them, two of us. That's four, I think. Then there's a chance to do something about this. I would love to see friendlies also kick out skirmishers. Any and all of them, because they're getting, right now, skirmished down by them, I think, and shot up by them. Okay, I was just checking to see if that was bugged, and then we actually had relations. Yeah, okay, they're they're zero percent. That that's. I guess you have to really zoom in to appreciate the three D models. Thing. Look at them; they have faces now. I gotta slow down the zoom speed too. Why is my scroll speed not saving? And eh, maybe it's limited somewhere. Yeah, that did not save at all, I don't think. Well, routing cavalry is good news for us. Skirmishers in a creek shooting at friendlies is not good news for us. Or Porter. Or Shank. Yikes. I mean, you're already out this far. You might as well concentrate on the flanks. Alright, our boys are hitting the dirt. Certainly Davies has earned a rest. I don't know. Maybe push in with these guys and try to turn this flank. I. Where's the rest of our friendlies? Where's Heinzelman? Oh, Heinzelman's going right where I am. And he's probably going to get there too late. Richardson, one, two, three, four. I mean, they could have five brigades up here, which would be a decent a decent force to allow us to clear out the back or to hit them in the flank while they do that. Let's see what we get within the saddle. Oh, that's not in the saddle. Let's turn it on and see what things look like here. All right, here I am. Okay. Let me ride on up here. Yeah, I don't like all that blue that I see so close. But it is a kind of cool role-playing thing. Who has the better weapons here? Okay, Baker does. Looks like they got HQ over here and some Artie back there. But if I support this attack, there's the chance that, a good chance that we're then going to get flanked as a result. There is no one up here. All right, Baker, see what you can do. Taylor. 
I'm going to try to get you up on this high ground. The reason is, is that you'll get a range advantage. Let's just check the condition. Well rested. That's good. Well rested. That's good. So yeah, it looks like we have them outranged. Oh, they got skirmishers as well. That's what's... Okay, we can't counter skirmish. That's okay. We could hit the deck. It looks like a friendly brigade over here on the left just broke, though. Ugh, Davies is moving up now. A little late. Well. If we lay down, we should be able to equalize casualties with him. But that at least tells us what's going on over here. And we have, I guess in the saddle, you also kind of lose some of that information about what the rest of the uh, army is doing here. Can I, can I, why would I spend 58 prestige to take over the skirmishers? Like of all the things, man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I swore, I swear it told me that Baker had the Springfield Rifle Muskets. Uh, I'm not actually sure we have the range on these guys. Yeah, I don't see anybody going through the motions to fire, so I, I'm, I'm doubtful of that. Okay, we're going to order them up. Our guys who are curiously uniformed in gray, don't ask why, I don't know. Okay. So we are going to move on up. We're going to try to bully these guys. I may actually just order the charge. This is what I frequently will do. Or at least what I frequently say Cav should do. Alright. Yeah, so they're about to break. That's fine. And we're going to move, since we have pretty crap weapons, we're going to move up anyways. Okay, they're there. I guess I'll go up here for an even better vantage point. I don't think you get prestige for routing skirmishers, and you shouldn't. Yeah, so it's just casualties for the moment. We're going to order them to shoot at them. We're going to do some wonky reform. That's fine. Fine by me. Do you want to make sure... No. Wait, is that... No, it's one brigade in an HQ. Alright. We are going to try to get close, and that's just to improve accuracy. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not close enough to the fence to, to get in contact with it. So. Well, they had a good volley. Uh, yeah, I thought these guys were probably taking not that many casualties, and so... If you're not taking many casualties, you can move up. Uh, unless 
the AI whirls to meet you, but then they have problems that they're gonna take casualties from, from these guys. I'm guessing these guys got beat up, they did. And hey, look, the AI, this is a credit to them. They are withdrawing prior to breaking. So that is a good thing. Hopefully they don't know to switch anybody on to attacking Baker. He's getting beat up, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Alright, Taylor's in a good position. I think we'll get the route on that brigade. Uh, apparently I only have knowledge of what I can see by craning my neck around or getting the horse. And the AI wisely falls back. guys to flank them and see if we can get the objective I'm worried about Baker getting hit in the flank and taking too many casualties armed with here. They, okay, so they only have muskets. So we do have a range and we do have a height advantage on them too. We do have to contend with the fact that our accuracy is going to drop off as things go on. And they're probably going to get the creek cover bonus. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see any way around that. Confident. Eh, confident, but not that confident. All right, and we got the route there. So, what we want to do is move Taylor up here and capture that victory point. Give Baker a break as he falls back. If the AI wants to pursue him up the hill, that's that's up to them. I see skirmishers. I see puffs of smoke. There was artillery. I think there still is artillery out here. So, I'm going to order... Oh, I meant to order them from Taylor. I think I ordered them from Baker. Uh, Baker's skirmishers can actually go up to the fence. And then... Have uh, Taylor's guys. Let's just see what they can get over there. Maybe we can get another pick on artillery. So casualties are pretty close. I don't know if the intelligence is correct. There are actually 40,000 of them. If it is, that's fine. Uh, but it explains why we're not winning this battle. Hmm. Okay, those are routed units up there, alright. Why on earth would they take that route? Yeah, just move up to Milltown that way. Alright, they seem to be doing alright. There we go. Right, they have the fence. That's good. These guys are all stacked up on top of one another. interest of moving things along will, well, move things along. But it looks like the rest of our force is getting in a position to attack. I hope it's on that center. As much as I would like to get these quasi-freebies up here, I don't think we will. 
not even sure that we can go after that group to harass it, but maybe. Just waiting for things to improve over here. I don't know if that cab is routing or not. So we don't seem to actually be taking this, so I don't know if we need to move them off the point or what the deal is. Alright, Baker. Ti time to move up. Myself with them. Okay, friendly artillery is barking from up there. I'm not sure what those dudes are doing. Now we're capping it. Oh, we routed whatever that was. Interesting. Can we also route? Marshall's cab before it fully rallies. I guess we'll find out. And while Baker's here, we're going to push past this brigade here and see if we can get on its flank. I don't know what these guys are doing. They should just... Wilcox just needs to turn and shoot at them. Maybe Baker's boys can just lay down. I know it means that they're not going to be able to shoot much, but... You know what, Baker? Let's recall those skirmishers before they route. Just wheel, just wheel and shoot, man. Let's see. All right, things have now swung back in our direction, but who knows for how long. I think they just routed, which is, like, good news for us. Very good news for us. You know what? Let's just hold right there. Same thing with you guys. I, I I don't like what I'm seeing here. This actually looks like... I know there's a little bit of space here, but still overall looks pretty good. Uh, for my part, though, I have to actually get to a point where I can see what the heck is going on. I think this is a bad position for Baker. That is, uh... Yeah. I actually just want Baker moving back, not, not everyone. And then I'll also move back. And, 
maybe Taylor. Not sure. Oh no. You guys. Okay, good. Now you're actually facing the right direction. That's always nice. There you go. 4.5 casualties and click. That's fun by me. Okay, these guys should move back at the double. That cab is not yet shooting at us. Hopefully they have uh, mixed cab weapons or whatever they're called. Keep moving myself this way. Hope I can see everybody. By everybody, I just mean my two brigades. Oh, uh, what are we seeing? All right, so now it's pulled back to be a bit more even. And how are they? They're in rough condition. All right, so you gotta rally them, and I need to rally them. Pretty sure if I rally them, even though they're not breaking, it should help. Oh, yikes. It's just casualties. Yeah, so there's there's a good chance they're going to break. Oh, no, they did. Flanking fire? I don't think so. Alright. Smith is... I think getting beat by Taylor. That's good news. Mm, that might be our fault. They look like they can be salvaged. Right, so they're about to break, it looks. Right, I think what we do now is withdraw Taylor before too much gets piled on him. He might be able to be Floyd, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to beat Floyd and Jackson. Come back! And we're trying to hold the victory point as much as we can. And even though they've taken almost no casualties, well, it is their first battle, so that they're actually fighting spirit was going to cap them at 67% morale, so they're, they're not really going to do better than they are right now. All right, let me see if I can get back and any chance of rallying. My goodness, Baker ran fast. They really took off when they got up there. Uh, plus 31 an hour. We'll see. I mean, that means that they should rally within the hour. They also may become more fatigued, though, so I'm not, I'm not too sure what's going on there. I do see, yeah, we have this going on down here. Um... I don't know what is going on with our formation, but we'll try to have our boys figure it out. They are all kinds of screwed up at the moment. Has Baker rallied? No, that's not rallying. I think we'll get the creek bonus for that. Yeah, we will. Wait, 
Who's been wounded? I hope it wasn't me. No, I don't say that. Since they came well within our range, we're just going to go ahead and uh, duck down there. We should all be able to fire after that anyways. It's true both sides have the creek, but you know if they're going to hang out there. It looks like our two brigades over here also beat off their challenger. We now have friendly artillery falling on Jackson. Yes, that one. And our goal here is to just hold on this point for a while. Unfortunately, they do have a second brigade coming up. There's not too much we can do about that. I'm starting to really doubt that Baker is actually going to come back. That the morale gain doesn't seem to have actually worked the way that it, it looked like it would. Alright, plus three on that volley is not bad. Oh, I guess they didn't beat these guys. I just, even though I'm looking down a hill 100 yards away, I can't see them. Jackson's guys, you can see, do have a loss resilience. They have more loss resilience in total than we do. Let's see whether it matters. So they are slowly recapping this, but I think I get to hold, I think our side is gonna accumulate the victory points until they actually go to the other side. And we actually turn the casualties around this time, so that's, that's a plus. All right, so this is something we gotta work on. I, I, this is my fault. I, uh, in campaign 12, I turned down the XP gain for perks because I basically I didn't want to be able to get perks for myself it was one of the things we were going to try to handicap but I, I, I don't feel like doing that in in this campaign I feel like playing playing with the perks is a good idea I do like perks I wish the AI selected them better but it is what it is and it's it's okay we'll put them back on Jackson is stable. Wow, they're at plus 20 an hour. What are we at? Alright, well, we're pretty much at our cap anyways, so. Any more than that doesn't help us too much. Great if that friendly artillery came in and broke them up a little bit. Floyd is also fine. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the fight here. Yeah, this one could definitely swing back against us. Uh, and I think Taylor's in a position where he's pretty much stuck. And he's committed to that fight, and he's got to hold there or or break. And, and he might just break. But since I don't think there's too much else going on, we're just going to play it a little bit quicker. On the prestige front, you know, we've certainly netted quite a few. Again, it'd be great if these guys maximized their frontage and their firepower. We're able to get more out of that.
think after this battle we'll make some adjustments to the XP gain per casualty, both for perks and probably just for unit experience. I would think if Jackson's 1st Brigade has a star, I would imagine that this Volunteer Brigade ought to be really close as well. Ammunition. Oh, we are running low on ammunition. Commander. They're getting tired. And it says that they're under artillery fire. I'm not sure that's true. My concern in all of these situations is that once we stand up, we are just going to eat a volley to the face, and it's probably going to exacerbate things tremendously. I'd like to hold out in the hopes that one of these other brigades from another division is able to, to come over and help out. Not not sure that that's going to actually happen, but I think on loss resilience, we can hang out for a while. But given the loss of ammo, some other things, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's worth it for me to kind of leave Taylor and try to bring Baker into the fight. Not even sure that I'm going to be able to bring Baker in. So tell me these guys are... Oh no, they're coming. Are they coming for me? By me, I mean Taylor. Whatever they're doing, I know it's on 2x speed, but my goodness, they are moving. Alright, well we might be able to kill Jackson through his loss resilience. Alright, we're going to start taking flanking fire. So, we're going to fall back up this hill as fast as we can. And I'm going to move back here as well. Get a little bit closer to Baker. We'll certainly be turning the recruitment on when we get back into camp. It would be great if friendlies could readjust here. This late in the battle, yeah, well, maybe 74 prestige would be worth it. Maybe it wouldn't. I mean, Howard's brigade there is fresh. How much for, uh, it's probably more than I got. How much for Heinzelman's whole division? I feel like I can make better use out of him than he could. 130 prestige? What do you got? Let's do it. Let us, if I could only click on him. There we go. Heinzelman, you're mine. Howard, get up there. Wilcox, support him. Franklin, you move over here. You guys got to rally. I got to rally you. This is my battery. This battery needs to toss shells that way. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. No. You all better not be retreating. Oh, my goodness. I just... I As soon as I... <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up, man. As soon as we took over Heinzelman's command, our army looks like it made the decision to retreat. Holy moly. Well, well, would switching to attack make a difference? No. All right, and Taylor, you just got to fall back as fast as you can. And I guess we are cons... Oh my. That is just bad all around. Every which way, man. Uh, but. Did we actually go through the threshold? Yeah, we did. I, I, I wasn't paying attention to it. 19. And like, we just went over 19% before they did. Or, or did we? So if we had. I don't get it, man. We took 300 more casualties, but we had 8,000 more troops. The ratio doesn't make sense. Well, I've whined enough. I'm just going to fast. Oh, and of course, we had to break at the end. Yeah, Fine. A final kind of indignity there. But uh, yeah, this is going to be the end of this episode. We have some recruiting and apparently some retreating to do. Uh, we might end up leaving the battle with about as much prestige as we started. That is a darn shame because 
it took us a thousand casualties to tread water there on on neutral but that uh yeah my mistake so not a great <laughs> not a great start to this campaign but uh these things happen and uh yeah i'll make some adjustments and uh we'll try to get a second episode out to you i hope you enjoyed the 3d models i certainly do the eye candy is is a, a real draw for me